Erev Tov, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Got a whirlwind of things that are happening. We're talking about everything from Syria, North Korea, uh, Russia, Eastern Europe, the United States, things happening here. Uh, we're going to be going into a lot of things, friends, uh, including Jerusalem, the, 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 the move of the U.S. Embassy. A lot happening and really need to get right into these things here and share some very interesting insights with, with you. A very interesting move by President uh, Bashar al-Assad. Damascus warns it may shoot down Turkish planes attacking Kurds within Syrian borders. Now that is a major move by the uh, by President Bashar al-Assad, his government there, willing to support and protect the Kurds. As we know, the Kurds were a very major force uh, in defeating ISIS militants inside of Syria during this long civil war there. Uh, I've always been very supportive of the Kurds, but recently when President Trump made the uh, declaration that he was going to make a 30,000 man strong Kurdish military defense force there in the eastern part of the country, uh, especially around the Euphrates, protecting on the Turkish border, Euphrates border, and the Iraqi border. That brought a lot of criticism from President Erdogan against President Trump there. Uh, and oddly enough, we know that it is a Erdogan has become somewhat of an ally of Russia, and Russia, of course, is a major ally and supporter of the Syrian government and that of President Bashar al-Assad. So, where does this put the situation now with Bashar al-Assad standing there with the Syrian government? I mean, excuse me, with with Bashar al-Assad standing with the Kurds. Uh, which puts him on a good side with the United States, as far as I can see, with President Trump. But you know, the deep state is just not going to let President Trump have any good thing to say about President Bashar al-Assad. But it does show that President Bashar al-Assad can be fair and equal when it comes to the Kurdish uh, minority that live inside of his country. Even with President Trump uh, willing to do this move that appears to look like that they're creating a Kurdistan inside of his own country, yet President Bashar al-Assad, the real man that he is, standing up and willing to defend them, knowing that Russia is an ally with Turkey at the moment. Now, I still would have to say that if I was President Putin, I wouldn't trust Erdogan him further than I could throw him. And uh, because I think that the coup was staged from the beginning, I think he's working with the deep state. I have to kind of say it that way now. I believe that he's working actually with the deep state. I apologize for these sounds that keep popping up. Let me just turn the volume off because we are going to be playing a little clip here in just a little bit for you there. Uh, but again, I think that... Uh, if I was Putin, I would not trust the man whatsoever. Uh, moving on as well, this is a major issue that is happening right now. The Wall Street Journal, also Zero Hedge, Tyler Durden reported on this as well. The Chinese are clearly have been caught again aiding North Korea and not following in with the sanctions. That lets us know that China, they don't care what the U.S. says about the sanctions. They're not interested in that. North Korea is their partner. They're there to protect North Korea in the event of a preemptive strike by the United States. They're not only are they breaking the sanctions, but they're doing even more than just that. Let's move on to look at it. Michael D. on Twitter uh, has this uh, particular images here. The Chinese moving again, the big S-300 defense missile shield there to the northern province of uh, China today on just on the northern side of the DPRK. And, uh, you know, friends, that's just something that most people are not paying attention to. This came out on January the 17th. Uh, the Chinese Northern Theater Command 20, 20, 2018 here, January 17th, moving in this huge S-300 ballistic missile system. What are they doing it for? It definitely isn't because of North Koreans fleeing the country and trying to get out of the way uh, of a U.S. strike. This is China getting ready to protect North Korea. Now, if we jump over here to Michael D's Twitter page here, uh, just so you can kind of see, he shows some more images of the same uh, type things being deployed there. 
up there in the northern province there, but also he shows the video footage of when Russia, back on December the 21st, uh, also was deploying their S-400 systems there. Uh, Russia putting all of that heavy armament on the northern side up near Vladivostok, Russia, which is north of N North Korea there on their border. Huge amount, as you can see in the videos there, of uh, S-400 systems being deployed there. China deploying theirs there as well. They are anticipating a preemptive strike by the U.S. I don't see it any way other any other way of saying it, but they're expecting this. And again, I don't know. You know, I know, friends. I realize that there's all kinds of issues we could say about President Trump. I mean, I don't like the Vatican connection, but then again, the Pope speaks against him. He speaks against the Pope, but still seems to be a Vatican connection there. That's very troubling to me. But I listen to President Trump. If you listen to his words when the South Korean South Korean uh, uh, pre uh, President Moon, when he met or his delegation met with North Korea, Kim Jong Un's people there. President Trump comes out, says, great buys, looks like something good could come out of this. And yet he knew all along that North Korea said that they were not getting rid of their nuclear weapons. But the president was saying something good may come out of this. There's good vibes, et cetera, the different verbiage that he was using there. You know, so it lets me know that the deep state is the one that's actually controlling what's going on. All right. Now, with that being said, though, let's move on. Uh, other news as well here. The U.S. also, according to the article here, uh, still about North Korea there, some see U.S. already on North Korea war footing, waiting for the allies to get on board. Now, the article here states here, and this is from um, uh, the Japan Times, it states here some of the assets that the U.S. has been moving there. And you got to keep in mind, now, you know, I understand the U.S. moving assets there, not just for the fact of possibly trying to take down Kim Jong-un, but also you got to remember the Winter Olympics are fixing to start there in South Korea. And the U.S. does have an obligation to make sure not only its own participants are safe in the event of a breakout of war, but also the other nations that would be represented there, especially NATO nations that would be represented there. So it says here in the article, uh, most analysts, regional security experts, and government officials say the odds of a conflict erupting in uh, the Korean Peninsula remain low. Observers say uh, there has in recent months been a noticeable but discreet uptick in not only heated rhetoric, but also in a military preparations by the United States as well as moves by Japan to limit the fallout from any potential conflict. As, as Seoul and Pyongyang continue to lay down groundwork for a rare intra-Korean uh, cooperation in the next month, Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, South Korea, the U.S. has quietly been developing an assortment of powerful weapons, what it calls strategic assets, to the region. The military has sent nuclear-capable bombers, including uh, the uh, stealth B-2, six of its workhorse B-52s in the U.S. territory of Guam, a key logistics hub, and an outpost some 3,400 kilometers from North Korea. That was probably roughly about, oh, I don't know, about 2,000 miles or better there. But still, it's not so much as a direct threat for North Korea, but in a close enough proximity, if war does break out, the U.S. is able to react. Uh, at the same time, though, uh, Tyler Durden with Zero Hedge is showing as well that the U.S. Uh, deploys tactical communications scrambling plane to Korean Peninsula. Now, that's not at Guam, that's at the Korean Peninsula. It says the deal to allow North Korea uh, athletes and dignitaries to attend the Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang appeared to ease tensions on the peninsula earlier this month. Still, it appears the U.S. Air Force has been expanding its presence in South Korea. Local media reported Monday that the EC-130H Compass call aircraft, an advanced plane capable of denial of service attacks on enemy planes communication system, has deployed to South Korea's Osan Air Force Base by the U.S. Air Force earlier this month. Now, is that really for North Korea's planes, or is it really because of the Chinese Air Force that has been conducting its own military drills, and according to President Xi Jinping, telling them, be prepared and don't be afraid of death. Gosh, who knows, friends? It's just really very concerning. Now, this is something, though, that came out 
uh, that was very troubling, and this happens to be coming out on the uh, Latvian Information Agency, the U.S. B-52 bombers to fly in Estonian airspace. According to the report here, U.S. B-52 bombers are going to be part of some drills that are going on over in Estonian airspace there. Won't be dropping live bombs, but we'll be dropping some kind of like dummy type bombs there as part of the practice. No doubt, though, it does not make Russia at the most ease when they see B-52 bombers flying right there on their border where you can stand there and watch it from the Russian ground and see them flying above your head there. I think if I was a Russian, I would be just a bit nervous as well. Uh, Moving on into some other news right here, we have here, this is something that's really interesting that's just been coming out today there. The U.S. is to convert the existing Jerusalem facility uh, into an embassy for 2019 opening. Now, Prime Minister Netanyahu stated today that the U.S. embassy will begin to be opened in 2018. And of course, some of the news commentary coming out about that, about the embassy opening there in Jerusalem, uh, is of course not very far from uh, the old city of Jerusalem. We've been there many times. In fact, one day when I was filming in the park right across the street there, I was doing a teaching, I don't know, maybe a couple of years ago. Uh, next thing I know, I had U.S. Embassy security there stopping me and questioning me and telling me I shouldn't, I was not permitted to film with the, with the uh, U.S. compound in the background. And I, at the time, I didn't even know that the compound was there. Uh, but it is kind of interesting. It's actually adjacent to some sort of church here. Not sure exactly what type of church that is, but this is the place that they'll be converting uh, into um, uh, the U.S. Embassy. I think that'll at least save money, though. You don't have to worry about going out and building one. But that's not going over too well with Mahmoud Abbas. And in fact, on this article right here, I want to play just a portion of this for you. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to do our audio this time around. I think Abbas says some very interesting very things. Listen to this. Connection to Israel rejected any negotiations as long as Donald Trump is U.S. president, and called for destroying Trump's house, meaning him and his family, for generations. So here's my take. While Abbas's intent was to bury President Trump for declaring that America recognizes Jerusalem as Israel's capital, what he did was expose himself as a two-faced, inept leader who harbors deep anti-Semitic views. By doing so, he managed to create a rare consensus in Israeli society across the political spectrum. He confirmed what those in the Israeli right have been saying for decades. The issue is not the 1967 borders, it is Palestinian willingness to accept the existence of a Jewish state. Abbas described Israel as a, quote, colonialist project that is not connected to Judaism, not connected to Judaism. The absurdity there is mind-blowing. Even the Muslim Quran refers to the Jewish people as the children of Israel. The Jewish people have maintained a well-documented, unbroken presence in Israel for well over 3,000 years, with archaeological sites that clearly testify to that. Now, Abbas's Ridiculous claims included a demand that Britain apologize for the 1917 Belfort Declaration, which endorsed the idea of a Jewish homeland. So this show. Now, I kind of want to stop it right there, and there's a reason behind that. Uh, I found it interesting that, uh, that Abbas is also even condemning Britain for suggesting that there be a Jewish homeland. And the reason I say that, I want to back up in this uh, broadcast here, because I actually had seen the, the footage a little bit before this, and I want to see if I can pull this up where it's actually at there, where Abbas is sitting here. And... Um, in the background, you'll see maps of Israel on the wall there. And there's one particular part there that's really interesting. And uh, that's what I want to share with you. Because if he is wanting Britain to apologize, then my question is, is why doesn't he have the Ottoman Empire apologize as well? And in fact, here it is. Maybe he should have... President Erdogan apologize uh, because Erdogan, who wants to be uh, wants to revive the Ottoman Empire, clearly the first picture and you don't see it very well on your screen here. These are four different states of Israel. Well, the first one right here that they show there shows a little tiny strip of land there close to Tel Aviv area there, going all the way up the coast and then over towards the Sea of Galilee. 
This was in 1858. Now that's when Israel really became a state, long before the Balfour Declaration. This is when the early Jews were doing exactly that of what Abraham did when he would not allow a piece of land to be given to him in Hebron, but instead he purchased that land for his family to be buried there. Well, in 1858, this very first picture they're showing there was under the Ottoman Empire when they allowed the Jews to return to their ancient uh, ancestral homeland and purchase land there. Now, there, as the, the commentator makes uh, the comment in here, there has been a constant presence of the Jews for the last 3,000 years. There has always been a remnant of the Jewish people of some sort, very small numbers, that have been living in the ancient biblical land for the last 3,000 years. I have heard the stories tell of that there, uh, but clearly though we actually began to come back home in 1858. Now I am not though of the opinion of throwing out Palestinian people. I do not believe that that is correct to do. Uh, but I do believe that we should be able to live in peace together. If you could just get some of these political entities in the background out of the way of this, uh, then we would end up having a whole lot better uh, situation there. But there is so much involvement in the background, uh, whether it be Rome involved in, uh, in it or whether it be Jesuit uh, back government officials there that are that are that are instigating on the opposite side, and it causes the constant clashes. Uh, so it could be we could have peace there if you just get rid of all this outside influence. But they're all doing it for a political agenda and for a purpose driven, not for the sake of the Jewish people. I believe the Jewish people and the Palestinian people could live in peace together if you just get the nonsense out of the way there. But nonetheless, the Jewish people are there. They were given their homeland. They were able to come back and they're trying uh, to work something out. Anyway, it's just a mess there. Abbas doesn't like President Trump whatsoever, as a, as a commentator show, mentioned as well, wanted to destroy his house and his family with it. That's pretty much a madman as well. Very troubling situation indeed. Uh, moving on into other news as well. Uh, the Czech Republic, uh, Milo Zeman, according to here, the Czech Republic doesn't want migrants and re resolutely rejects the EU plans. Milo Zeman has been a very good man for the Czech Republic and he has resisted the EU pressure about uh, accepting a lot of refugees. Now, the Czech Republic has accepted refugees. Can't say that they have not completely, but they have a very strict process in the way they do it. They don't do it the way Angela Merkel of Germany has done it or other nations there in uh, Western Europe where they just allowed tens of thousands and thousands and thousands of uh, men seemingly men only refugees. So far the Czech Republic, they prefer to bring families in where you have true refugees, people that are actually in need and they try to integrate them into society inside of the Czech Republic. But Milo Zeman is not doing very well in the elections right now and the man that he is up against uh, that they're anticipating that, that could possibly win the election. Uh, uh, Yari Drahos he is the man that they expect to win, and if he does, it will certainly uh, open up the door to mass migration of refugees into the country because he is certainly an EU man. Uh, if I could, I, I'll tell you what, I would vote for Milo Zaman so that that way maybe it keeps a little bit more normalcy there. He follows in the footsteps of Poland as well as the Hungarian prime minister there trying to keep their country safer. And speaking of the country staying safer, finally, uh, Prime Minister Stepan Lofven is making a bold statement there about possibly sending in the Swedish military to crack down on these migrant gangs that are, that are operating in his country. And I've been saying this from the very beginning, Sweden needed to do something. You know, the people that are living there, we have hundreds of Swede, Swedish people that listen to the Israeli News Live broadcast there. I have talked to them privately. I've even met with them in person. And they're not allowed to say a word about the migrant situation. They're not allowed to tell you. They can't say it on social media or anything about the evils, about the rapes of the women and the, and the elderly being beat to a pulp and everything else and all the other evil ungodly things that are happening in the country and complete takeover of areas no-go zones they're not allowed to say anything about that because if they do they could end up in jail 
Well, let me say something here and now. For the Swedish people, my brothers and sisters, I'm here to stand with you. You got a major migrant problem. You have no-go zones there that are so dangerous that it's not safe for the Swedish people to walk in their own country. And if the Swedish government would stand up and enforce the laws of the land like you do against your own people, uh, then you know what? You wouldn't probably have such a problem with the refugee situation in the country to begin with. All you got to do is enforce the law. So I am supportive. The only problem is, as Stefan is talking about making this uh, not his first option to bring the military out, but I disagree. Make it your first option. Crack down and bring order into your country so that the people can live safely. And even the refugees that want to live safely, they can live safely as well. Use a little bit of common sense. My gosh. Moving on over to Brett Bart News here. Oh my gosh, this was an amazing article right here. Steve King uh, is a Republican leader. He is calling on an advocacy groups to protect unborn with what he calls the heartbeat bill. You know, we've never really taken up the abortion issue here on Israeli News Live before. We've talked about it a little bit. Uh, and one thing that I've always said, um, I, I do have a heart for women that have gone through this procedure before. Many of them regret, the, the, re regret what they have done in their lives. Uh, they go through so much emotional suffering. And there's something that they just don't tell you. And Planned Parenthood definitely doesn't say anything about this to the women. They don't really give them real counseling. All they do is lie to them and help make sure that they have bigger numbers and more abortions because it is, after all, it is a money maker for them. It's not really about, as they say it, women's rights. You know, and, and let me say something. I, I am a firm believer in equality for women. But when it comes to the life of of a human life, that is a human life period. And the bill here that uh, Steve King is wanting to get passed is if there is a heartbeat, then you can't do the abortion. I applaud this man for making such a bold stand. And in fact, when I saw the article today, the reason I brought it out was because I just so happened to be listening to a pre-recorded uh, uh, um, uh, a pre-recorded radio broadcast earlier today with Abby Johnson. It was on Moody Radio here in Orlando. And she uh, is a former, not just an employee, but it had became very high up in the Texas branch there of the Planned Parenthood. And she speaks about what really goes on with Planned Parenthood. And she speaks about how that, uh, what caused her to come out of the system and what caused her to change and have a heart for pro-life. And it would just turn your heart uh, it would just bring tears to your eyes to hear that testimony. As, as she put it in her own words there, she was having to use a, um, uh, the, uh, the ultrasound there while a doctor was doing a late-term abortion. And she saw the little child recoiling, trying to get away from the doctor and had no place to run to. How sad that was. Other issues as well that she brought up. Uh, we actually sent a, a letter to Ms. Johnson. Uh, my wife, Yana, of course, being a medical journalist, also a, a nurse midwife. Uh, Yana has delivered many, many children uh, in her life there. She is also pro-life and uh, wanted to have uh, my wife be able to interview her about uh, this incredible testimony that she has to bring more awareness to this, as well as uh, reach out to the women that are suffering, that have gone through this procedure, to let them know as well that God for loves you, He forgives you, and He realizes maybe you were going through a hard time in life, but you know, it doesn't, it's not an imp uh, unpardonable sin. You know, but we, you know, maybe you could be a voice as well uh, to help turn things around and reach out. If more women that have suffered these things in life, that have suffered psychologically and as a result of this were to stand up and speak out, maybe we could change. If, if you can't change the, this whole plan, maybe you could change the hearts of other mothers that are going through this as well, trying to make a decision such as this. And clearly, it is biblical prophecy being fulfilled here in the last days. Ever since Roe versus Wade, Wade and how this actually came about, I've always believed that it was like a case of Herod. 
uh, trying to find the baby Jesus, or in the case of Moses, the Pharaoh trying to kill off the, the, the children, looking for that anointed child. And truly, I believe your two witnesses would be born in the earth in this day here, anointed of the spirit of Moses and Elijah. And so Satan went looking for that anointed, uh, those anointed uh, children there, trying to find them and put a stop to it. And that was one of the reasons why I believe abortion became legalized in modern days. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for joining us here tonight. We trust this message has been, or this news broadcast has been a blessing to you. Uh, be sure to join us on our Facebook page on Israeli News Live and uh, just kind of show that to you so you know where that's at. Uh, we do have that. It, we've got 28, what, 28,000 plus likes on there. Didn't even know there's that many people had liked our, our page there. We always try to share things, things we may not share here on the news, but we try to put things in there, share, share news that we see that is going on. Our Twitter page as well. Uh, you can look that up. It's uh, Israeli News Live, I think, at Stephen Danoon. So I forget which way it is. But anyway, uh, uh, actually, let me just jump back over to it because our page was right there. Uh, We'll pull it up there just so you can see it. Yeah, Israeli News Live at Stephen Danoon. I had to use my pen name that I write books in there. Uh, you might want to follow us there. Where uh, I don't endorse all the things that I retweet. When I retweet things, it's not necessarily an endorsement. It's just to share with you things that we are seeing. Uh, so you might want to join in there. We've, there are several pages out there that were created for me by friends, and, and, and I've just lost track of some of those. But this is the one that we are actually on, Israeli News Live at Stephen Danoon. Uh, anyway, God bless you. Thank you for watching. Pray for my wife. She's really been going through a very difficult time here recently, and we do covet your prayers. She's been in a tremendous amount of pain uh, after one of the latest procedures there, and so we, she does. We we cover your prayers for her. Shalom and Erev Tov.